continue on finding new customers and networking. We talked about leads groups and mixers. What other avenues do you see? The other avenues, I take a blended approach. With this blended approach, the next two more successful types of things in these leads groups and mixers would be a chamber of commerce. Chamber of commerce are great because they are very community activated. They want the local small businesses to come in. They want the locally owned businesses to come in. They have ribbon cuttings. They might have a first Friday event. The beautiful thing about ribbon cuttings is that's a prospect for you and they send out an email blast that such and such a company is having a ribbon cutting, you attend it mm -hmm. and you get to know the people in that business. You also, as a cleaning contractor, get a free peruse of their space right. to kind of look around and see what some of the, the challenges may be of the job. And then you start finding out because all the employees are there, you find out the person that you really need to talk to. So chamber of commerce events could be huge. Now they tend to have its open exclusivity. So in the sense that anybody who is a cleaning contractor can join a financial planner or an accountant, whatever. So there's other people doing the same thing as you mm -hmm. are. So if you have other business categories like your own, you might have to do a little extra work and become more involved with the chamber, join some of their committees so that you're more visible, so that you are the one that people are thinking about when they're looking for your trade. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, nothing wrong with dipping your toe in the pool. Your business is new. Most chamber of commerce will uh, allow someone who is not a member attend a Events. So it's a good way to, to meet some of the players, but eventually they're going to want you to become invested. you got to put some skin in the game. Yeah. Exactly. You're going to have to join. It's going to be some out-of-pocket money, but it's a lot less than some other types of groups mm -hmm. because it's not an exclusive group. So the entry cost is low, plus it also has to deal with how active is that group in the community. Mm -hmm. Another type of group is more trade-specific. And the two industries, I mean, actually the trades groups I'm going to talk about in the cleaning industry, since this is a cleaning podcast, is the ISSA, which is the International Sanitary Supply Association, and BASCI, which is the Building Service Contractors Association mm -hmm. International. Now, these types of groups are completely inclusive of the entire industry. So it might be the manufacturers, it might be the distributors, the building service contractors, in-house operation, and all facets of contracting from the independent contractor to the carpet cleaners, disaster restoration. And what they do is they, they're involved more, their focus is on training, on development of management as well as training programs within an organization, government intervention, and even compliance. Okay. These groups were very active during the recent pandemic that we had in, in getting some government intervention and trying to bring additional awareness to the the necessity of proper sanitation and disinfection of facilities using the right types of equipment, the right training, the right chemistry, and trying to educate not just the industry, but the outward, the end users of who were using the products. Okay. So these types of things, yes, you're working with your fellow, maybe your competitor in your market, but it gives you a sounding board if you develop a relationship with somebody in another state, another city, mm -hmm. that you can use as a sounding board when they are getting to a challenge that, hey, I haven't been there yet. Who do I need to talk to? Sure. How do I get around this? Yeah, that makes sense. You know, and one of the things that I'd like to drop in for our listener here, uh, we're going to have a link to another podcast about uh, locating customers through training, and actually the differentiator for each company. So Docs is a, is a huge resource for training, Joel. I mean, how many years in the business? 40 plus years in the business. <laughs> right. I was eight years a master trainer for the ISSA. So I do have a little bit of experience. Right. So we're going to have another podcast specifically, you know, around the why you and one of the differentiators, uh, one of those being training. So keep an eye out for that in the, in the links below. Looking forward to it.